Hey, sis, good morning. I mean, good afternoon. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to the Bible study, the midweek Bible study here at Helping Hand Ministries, Christian Fellowship. Um, um, Mel Stiff, I'll be, be substituting. Um, and it's an honor to do for Pastor who had a little bit of issues, um, a little bit of oral surgery. So for the next two weeks, I will uh, facilitate the Bible. So I'm going to turn this sideways, everyone, if everyone's okay with that in the profile. So I'm going to keep going back and forth. And I need this just because of, of, of the mouse. So with that being said, and welcome, let's go to the throne of grace. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you, give you all honor and praise, Heavenly Father, always, got to say that, give you all the honor and all the praise for being who you are, hallowed be your name first, Heavenly Father, dear God, as we come to today to worship you, Heavenly Father, through study, dear God, and as we continue on with Galatians, dear God, that, that whatever's coming out through the study tonight, Heavenly Father, will be an edification for all of us in the room, dear God. Mm -hmm. Because, dear God, we, we trust and believe that when two or three gather in the name, you are in the midst, Heavenly Father. So we just ask the Holy Spirit to come in tonight to go ahead and facilitate this Bible study, although I'm just standing up, running my mouth, Heavenly Father, that you are the one actually doing the, the, the facilitating. So we just thank you, dear God. We give you all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we're going to pick up today from, from um, Galatians 4. And even before we go, and, and pastors then talking about it, but just break down, what I want to do is give a sense of where, <coughs> as far as Paul's mission, allergies, everyone, um, that, that Paul's, um, with at least second mission, you can see where he had traveled. And also, so, so everybody can get a sense where Galatia is. The Galatia that's referred to refer to several areas, not just an area just called Galatia, but this is the part of the world right here. And, you know, this is the um, continent of, of um, Africa. We can see Israel here. There's Egypt, so the continent of Africa. And as you go up and see Greece, modern day Greece, um, and also coming on over in Italy's over here. But this is where um, um, Antioch of Syria was the launching place for the missionary journeys because uh, Antioch had become the, the headquarters, if you will, after Stephen was, was martyred. So they moved from down here in Jerusalem and went up to Antioch. But anyway, you see above today, Galatia is, is part of the modern day Asia, and the pastor had mentioned that before. So that's what we're talking about here in the area. And Paul's writing to this group because he had, of course, visited them before. But if we look at the modern day Asia, and now I'm showing just to give you a sense again, this is Antioch, and this is Paul's journey. And we don't know if he's which church is actually writing to, but he's writing to all of them and the churches of, of Galatia. Mm -hmm. So that's who he's writing this letter to. So, um, and moving on, let's talk about, we throw this out a lot, and, and we talk about what is the law? Well, the law is typically regards the first five books of the Bible. When you look at the first five books of the Bible, Moses is traditionally given credit for writing the first five books of the Bible, which you would call them the law. And the names of the first five books that it called you here called the law, Mosaic law, Torah, which is which is the Hebrew, Pentateuch, which is the Greek. But for us, the law for the most part, when we think about it, we just think about the Old Testament. Okay? But Mosaic, but Paul is referring to him, and this is important because this group right here wanted to stay to the law, right? We talked about that. The Jew the Jew B eyes, but Judaizers, okay? Early um converts to Christianity who try to force believers from non-traditional backgrounds to adopt Jewish customs as a condition of salvation. I mean, if Jesus wasn't enough, you still got to do everything else. Okay? The evidence of the movement within the early church first emerged around um, 49 AD when certain men came down from 
Judea and taught the brother. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And that's referring there to the Jerusalem Council. But that same group of men is what we're dealing with, and Paul is trying to unteach what they have brought to the area. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, and even then, even from when we talked about early on in, in Galatians, when, when pastors teaching, it's still spilling over to chapter 4. So the, the apostle Paul denounced this idea, insisting that only one thing is necessary for salvation. That's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the letter to the Galatians, Paul continued the same argument, insisting that the believer is justified by faith alone. To become a new person in Christ is to be set free from the requirements of the Jewish law. Without just the Mosaic law, you know, he's talking about the Torah. The, and for all, but in Christ, Jesus um, Jesus Christ neither circumcision or non uncircumcised avails anything but a new creation. More about your heart, not about whether you the circumcision is taking place or not. And um, and so he's sticking along. Let's talk about tonight, which is chapter four, which goes into um, air on inheritance. And we know this, but I, th there's a reason why I want to put it up here, okay? Because Paul is going to speak a lot on, especially the first part of the night. We'll cover about um, probably verses 1 through 17. Depends on how far we get, and we'll pick up the rest of them next week. Only members of a family are heirs to receive an inheritance. To benefit a stranger in blood, it was therefore necessary to adopt him into the family. The act of adoption itself being both irrevocable. Anybody know what irrevocable means? You can't take it, you can't turn back to it. I mean, once it's irrevocable, it's done. I mean, you can't. And we see that sometimes through out doing revocable trust, right? Or irrevocable trust. If you do a trust for somebody to leave it for you, got a revocable trust, you can always go back in and change it. Irrevocable trust, once it's done, it's done. That's, that's funny, because our IRS, that's what they favor. You get more favor to the irrevocable trust, they don't want you to change it. So, but anyway. Constituting a title to inheritance. The key here is looking at the adoption. Because and an inheritance and, and an heir. I told um and we know we don't when you do a will, okay, a will and testimony, you decide who's gonna be the adoption, right? And we'll see later on that Jesus, and I'm just using this, and, and Melvin just came up with this, and this is not written anywhere, that when Jesus died, that we were all his heirs. He did a will for us when he died on the cross. That was the will. He died, the will was done. Then he died, and we got an inheritance. So just that, that act that act in self alone. Let's look at, instead of reading through the scriptures, what I'm going to do, if, if you can, with your, with your, your Bible, is to break down each one instead of reading it all in one time and coming back, that we have, we, have, we have go ahead and <clears throat> read it several verses at a time. Um, and, and what I have here is the New King James Version, and I like the New Living Translation for a, um, a moment where we facilitate and work through this together. And I was just telling Pastor just briefly, sometimes you can look at Paul, and especially sometimes with the New King James Version or the King James Version of the Bible, some of the terms, and even some of the other translations like the American Standard, when you look at it, 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 it seems like it can be difficult. So that's why I get the definition of inher and inheritance and the Judaizers as we go in and we dive in, into, these, into these verses. verses. Um, Starting at uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. And this is the New King James Version. Now I say, the heir, okay, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. What do you think is a, the, 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 if, if an heir, and at the time, especially in the Old Testament, you got a child, this regular child, and you you got a slave. Listen, that's a slave child. That child is slave. What right does a slave have? No rights. No rights. <laughs> no rights. <clears throat> that child has rights, but it's still a child. It's almost like, okay, you can't get an inheritance. If you're 18 years old, then you're eligible to get your inheritance. 
that's somewhere with the, where Paul's was, was stating here. You know, we look at that analogy. When you're a child, you can't receive that inheritance yet. So the child and the slave, the slave has none. The child has conditionally has somebody. He really has none until he, he or she reaches age, right? So that's the saying. As long as the, the heir, um, I now say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from the slave. As long as he's a child. Though he is the master of all. But under guardians and stewards until the appointed time. So you got people looking over that child. There are those, right, that have to look over that child. Now, <coughs> let's look at what the New Living Translation, how it's stated. Think of it this way. If a child dies, and we just say, and I say this too, the King James is a word-for-word -word translation. New Living Translation is not. It takes it and takes the idea of it and write it in such a way that's a little more modern for us to understand. And I, and I like the way it did for chapter 4. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance to his young children, those children are not better off than slaves until they're grown up. I mean, they still have nothing, right? Even though they actually own everything their father had, but they can't, their rights are not, their rights are, are, are delayed. Verse 2. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their fathers set. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, they're just sitting there and they can't they can't do anything. And I forgot which king it was that that he was king, I think seven. And, and pass, or one may, may help me, but he couldn't do anything until he until later. He, although he was a young king, and so a lot of um, the, pe the people who, who were his stewards had to help him until the king age. And I got to go back and look at. It. I'm paraphrasing. So I think it was Josiah. Josiah, okay, and um, and so he became of age. So, um, but he had everything, right? He just he just uh, did the acts. Any any comments? Any questions so far? Um, about that, everyone has this idea of the concept of inheritance in an heir. And we can look at that because that's, that's in these first few verses, that's what Paul, Paul's going. And remember, he's trying to, again, these Judaizers had come in and say, you got to do all these works, you got to do all these different things. And he's trying to un unteach that. Okay? Verse 3, King James Version. Even so, we, were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Ooh, that took me a minute. See, elements of the world. <laughs> and it took me a minute because that was a little that that threw me a little bit. Even though we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Because you still don't have no rights. You heir, you're heir, but you don't have any rights. You're not full. You're not um, fully. You know, fully developed. Elements is saying here, and I, I read a commentary, and it said, if Paul was thinking of elementary principles, he meant that people are in bondage to the basic elements of religion. I guess the simple stuff, the stuff in, in, in many spirits, he was saying that the people are in bondage to elementary spirits, meaning certain gods and demons. The elements of the world, gods and demons, those things that were contrary to what he had taught them earlier. So those things that creep back. Paul had taught them before and those things were creeping back. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something that <laughs> we can start out and, and, and we don't know certain things. We are taught certain things but then we revert back to yeah. things that we've done. I, and I use Antoine as an example. You know with, with his um, being on the spectrum, autism spectrum. If, if you don't watch an, an autistic individual, I'm talking about you Antoine Autistic individuals, it's hard for them to break habits. So once you break them, you have to watch because they'll revert back. He back to smile. You revert back to old habits. So you have to stay. Paul, what he's trying to do is trying to break them from going back to the elements, those old habits they had, which was worshiping the gods and the demons and the other things around that had to creep them again because of, of um, after he had left and the teachings of Judaism. Verse 4 here. But when the fullness of time had come, being in bondage, 
God sent forth his son. Who is the son? Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Born under a woman. Born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that might receive the adoption of the sons. What do you think um, Paul's referring to there in the Old Testament sense? What is he referring to there? And we go back to Isaiah, right? When when Isaiah stated that Jesus, that, that the, the Messiah will be born to a virgin, right? Mm -hmm. That God it is prophesied that 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 God would send forth the son born to a woman, and he he'd be born under the law. Jesus was born. He was born under the law. He adhered to the law, right? When he was here, he did those things because he was he was Jewish. And but to redeem those who are under the law, that they may see the adoption, adoption as sons, to be adopted. So to be under that bondage, Jesus came in and said, Well, no, when he died, we all become have an opportunity, once we are saved, to become his heir. And that's simply done by doing what? <laughs> Confess it with your mouth. Okay. In your, that Jesus died and rose on the third day. Mm -hmm. You'll be saved. Guess what happens? You're adopted in. That's all it takes. And those who are in the same, you automatically are adopted in. It's done. He paid the price. But the Judaizers, Judaizers were trying to keep them. Trying to keep them under bondage. So this is what the New Living Translation the way it is, it's broken down the same, same verses. Verse 3. And that's the way it was before Jesus came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so much packed in Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's so much that, you know, that he that he died. And we, we're talking about him in Sunday school, too. It's just so much that Jesus represents. That this plan God had to send him through, and, and, and like Pastor has said, and he said, um, few times that that Jesus put a face on God. Jesus put a face on God before just you're going through all these rituals and everything else, right? But then Jesus came because they could look at him directly. He came in incarnated, word incarnated. That's spiritual side, right? He became the flesh and dwelt among us, put a face on God. So, but he came to give us freedom. This, this right here, he, 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 and, and it's similar to that, you know, he's consistent because he, he uses the same concept in Romans. This could be difficult for you to explain to another Christian coming in. So you, you have to have the, not, not necessarily for, for me to break down all the scriptures, you got to understand how it works. Because if you try to just speak it like this it may be confusing but you got to understand what the adoption means right and and if if and we are under the adoption because we are gentiles right so we are adopted and we are heirs so we when the adoption takes place if you got i think about sandra bullock right she she has children that she's adopted i don't think she naturally had any other children but I, I guarantee you that if something happens to her, those kids will they will be heirs and they receive everything that they they receive everything she had because they were adopted. Mm -hmm. The same the same concept that we have with, with you know with Jesus. Any, any comments? Anything? Born of a woman speaks the crisis humanity. And perhaps alludes to his role as the ultimate seed of a woman. Talked about seed last week. Born under the law. 
means Christ was subject to the Jewish law, further establishes his identification with all the people who are subject to the law. You can, we can identify with Jesus. All there, there is only one natural son in God's family, Jesus Christ. God has graciously adopted all believers as his son. We are no longer slaves to sin nor children under the guardianship of the law. When Jesus came, that guardian that I was talking about earlier is gone. We no longer, we no longer have that guardian. And so that, that guardian, there's no need for that, that guardian anymore, which, which is the law. They mature from that. And so that's what we, 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 we must keep in mind. Although there's only one natural son, Jesus has graciously adop adopted us. And we, we can keep that in mind that we are part, we are part of, of that. We are grafted into that vine. We are grafted in. Verse 6. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out. So once we have that, what does Abba mean? Abba Father. Anybody have an idea what Abba Father? Daddy. 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 Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that sentimental. You know, you just, mm -hmm. I'm, calling, I'm calling you Daddy. You know, so we all have that, that, that we, we also, this is, this is Daddy. You know, Daddy. And when we know Jesus too cried out and, and called the Father. He said, Abba, Abba. And so, therefore, you're no longer a slave, but a son through receiving all your rights. And as a son, then, an heir through Jesus Christ. So you get all the rights. You get all the benefits of being an heir. Meaning you do not have to use the law again. You can get away from the law. That you receive all that. But then, indeed, when you know God, you serve those by nature, not little g gods. Mm -hmm. Not little g. Lowercase g. Not serving those by nature are not gods. The New Living Translation of that. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out Abba Father. Now, you are no longer a slave of God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Before you Gentiles knew God, you were slaves to so-called gods that do not even exist. So, and, and, and when we talk about this, right, there, is only, there are no other gods. There's only, there's only God. So you now know that Gentiles, there are no other gods. Because these Galatians were Gentiles, right? The majority of Gentiles. So they're called gods do not exist. So that was, that, that's a vain false. Those, those things are, are, don't exist. And that was all in vain. Mm -hmm. It's all in vain. Any other comments or anything? Anybody? Verse 9, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and barely elements, the little elements again, other things you were worshiping before, um, Galatians, to which you desire again to be in bondage? Why go back? Mm -hmm. You're saying, why are you going back? You were here, you, you gotten that far, why do you go back? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labeled you in vain. Verse 10, I want to touch on that. Um, does anybody have any idea what that he may mean by um, you observe dates, months, seasons, and years? And the matter of fact, in, in Sunday school, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, we're going to talk about feasts and festivals. Mm -hmm. Cause then you observe, and this is a Judaeus too, that 
they were still, and, and um, we go and, and, and expand on that, but days, months, and seasons, and years um, could be observing, talking about the Sabbaths. You know, you're talking about the different Sabbaths, the, the, the different seasons and the festival, you know, the, the, the seasons. You know, you got um, what, um, after seven years, okay, you got the, um, the, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, and then you got the 50, 49, and after that, the 50 year would be your what, Jubilee? Mm -hmm. So you have all the different. Why are you going back to that when there, there, this, this, this is no good anymore? And Paul said, if you're doing all that, you're going back. You're going back in in in, in vain. Um, I share this. I, I had a family member, and uh, my wife and the one I'm talking about, who 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 just purchased a vehicle, right? And and she wanted me to come over there and kind of show us some things on this gadget, on this on this car. It was a Lexus. And um, so I showed her all these different things. You know, they got things like, you know, <laughs> and I don't know what it's like because I don't own one, of course. But you can keep, she can have a key in her purse. And you may be able to, know, you may be able to do this with, with, with a Mercedes. She can have a key in her purse. She walk up to the car. The car is locked now when she comes out. All she has to do is put her hand on the handle and open the door. Right. You know, don't have to put a key out or anything. As long as it's in her purse. And, um. And so, um, show that went back and, and, and went through the scenario. Go back on your porch, you know, put, you know, put your key, now lock it. <laughs> now we're gonna go back on your porch, come out like you, you're going to the car, put your, put your key in your purse, and all you gotta do is walk up. Okay, she said, okay, I got it. Well, a week later, went back, guess what she's doing? She's taking her key back out <laughs> and looking for her keys and hitting the button. The keys a lot of times will get down the bottom of her purse and she's trying to fumble with it. No, your keys in the bottom of your purse. Just go in and just open the door. She went right back to the old way. That's, my point of that is, that was what Paul was saying, that I taught you how to do it the other way by opening the door. But when I come, now I'm, I got to come back here and teach you again because now you're taking the keys out of your purse and hitting the button on it to unlock the door. Are sticking the key in the door itself. That's what he's saying. Yeah. That you're going back. So, and and you don't need to do that no more. Mm -hmm. And um, and we are creatures of habit, right? And so, and, and that's what happened. This is what <coughs> the New King James I mean, excuse me, New Living translates. So that you know God, or should I say now that God knows you. Why do you want to go back again and become slaves once more to the weak and useless spiritual principles of the world? Verse 10, you are, are, are trying to earn favor with God by observing certain days or months or seasons or years. You think they think they're doing the right thing, but it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary. Verse 11, I fear for you, but how, because... Now he's, it's a rebuke right here, you know, isn't it? In verse 11, I fear for you because all my hard work with you was for nothing. That's kind of harsh. <laughs> he's, he's harsh with him saying that, you know, why did you, you know, what you're doing was for nothing. You wasted my time. <laughs> but that's not what, you know, but it's just in vain. So here it is. Why do you want to go back to all these seasons and the days? It's unnecessary. What any one of those thoughts on that? Any other thoughts? But Paul's in effect asking the Galatians, your spiritual progress again, why this riches, why are you why are you going back? You don't need to go back to any of these um Festival. So what he does, he's saying, okay, you're doing that. I want you to look at me. Verse 12, brothers, I urge you to become like me, for I became like you. You have not injured me at all. You know that because of my physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at first. Paul's saying, I'm not... You know, I'm the one who is in, tr in trouble because now we don't know, and, and this word doesn't say it, but we know 
that some think, and, 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 and there's some others that Paul didn't see well, that he, he, um, that he, but he preached the gospel anyway to him. So here it is, not only that I was physically um, um, hampered, I still, even with that, I still preach the gospel to you, and here it is, you revert back. <laughs> I, I did that work. Feeling bad, let's say, I'm say, I'm feeling bad, I, I got a situation, I labor, but then you flip and go back. <laughs> How would anyone feel? I mean, it's, 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 when you feel okay, that's one thing. But when you when you struggle and go through and you think you got it, and you turn back around and they're doing something else, yeah. Yeah. So it's not. Uh, and, and 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 I can see, and, and there's some empathy there. So you you come back. Like, so this is somewhat a rebuke too. This is somewhat a rebuke. And some think in Paul's letters he's harsh, but when he's among them, he's he's a little more. He softened, and, and and that was a criticism of um, some of Paul. Say, hey, you you talk tough in your letters, but in your moments you don't you don't talk tough like that. Because he was not, when we understand tradition, he, he was not an imposing kind of person, and kind of a simple looking if if there's such thing, simple looking guy. You know, so. But anyway, but he this is a rebuke. New New Living Translate, dear brothers and sisters. I plead with you to live as I do in freedom from these things. For I have become like you, Gentiles, free from those laws. You do not make, you did not mistreat me when I first preached to you. They were nice to him. Surely I, you remember that I was sick when I first brought you the good news, the gospel. So here it is. He, they, Paul said, you didn't, he gave them a compliment, but a rebuke at the same time. But he said, I become like you Gentiles. <laughs> like you Gentiles. So, you know, I'm, you know, to be free from the law, because we know that Paul himself, he was hardcore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what wrote Damascus? Oh, yeah. He had letters in hand. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, going to deliver them so they can be, you know, persecuted. And so here it is. But he dropped all that, and he's a staunch, you know, he, he was he was a student of Gamaliel. We know that he was there when, when Stephen was martyred. He was holding the, the coats, and he was staunch. He was zealous for going to take those letters, but he dropped all of that. Mm -hmm. And what he said, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews. But he dropped that. And, and going to verse 14, New King James, And my trial, which was in my flesh, did not despise or reject. But you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. They received him, you know, things like the parallel is they were really accommodating to him. They were really accommodating to him. 15, now here comes a rhetorical side. <laughs> I know Patsy, he, he's good at rhetorical questions, right? We had it earlier in Galatians. What then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear witness that, if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. So here it is. You were so nice to me, and I had an issue with physical, a physical issue. You were so nice to me. Now, 16. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Because I'm telling you the truth, now you're, you're, you're apparently they're, they're saying some things that got back to Paul that they were, there was some, some negative stuff about him. How is that now? You're nice to me, but you're going to flip and turn on me. And sometimes, and, and, and this is my thought, the Judaizers had, had caused them to do that because some people... You know, when you're around, they're cool. But when you leave and they get around other folks, <laughs> they change. Mm -hmm. And they'll talk about those who are working out for their, for their best their best interests right. a lot of times. That people, because I, I look at, a, um, and this is not a sense from a sense of speaking, but their actions. You're trained up your child. They get to a certain age. They leave your house and get around buddies or whatever. <laughs> And they flip from you, and and they'll be 
thinking that you come around, then they don't want to listen to anything you have to say. Mm -hmm. Then they don't listen to you. They, they got the buddies on it, <laughs> the buddies. Until they have to find the hard way. Mm -hmm. So you look at here, Paul was with them. They were good. I mean, they were their friends, call them friends. And then these other people come in and influence them negatively. Now that Paul's trying to correct that and rebuke them, now they, they want to treat them like the enemy. That's gotten back to them. And, and we don't know this, but this, this is a sensitive, personal part with Paul right here. Mm -hmm. New King, New Living Translation. But when though my spirit tempted you to reject me, you did not despise me or turn me away. This is before. No, you took me in and cared for me as though I were an angel from God or even Jesus Christ himself. Really gracious to him. Verse 15. Where is that joyful and grateful spirit you felt then? I am sure you would have taken out your own eyes and given them to me if it had been possible. Have I now become your enemy because I am telling the truth? That is um, something to say some, somewhat sensitive. Now, you know, you're around other people. Now, you know, <laughs> Martin, you flipped on me. <laughs> Paul was saying, you know, here it is, right? But now you're flipping. And now I'm coming back into you, you know, uh, um, another word, waffling. <laughs> you're waffling. Waffle. Mm. <laughs> you say waffling. Mm -hmm. And now I'm telling you the truth. And now I'm no longer your, your friend anymore. And, and how often does that happen? I would say it happens often. Yeah. They come back to you now. I'm not your bud no more. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in those terms, so, and this is the personal side and, and, and talking about, about, about Jesus Christ. Verse 17. They zealously court you, but for no good. Who, who is they? Who do you think they is? Who's they? Any, any comments about they? I like to just throw pronouns up. Who is they? I believe he's talking about we have two, maybe two groups, the Ju Judaizers and also those pagan people that are around them. Mm -hmm. Because the elementary spirits that he was talking about earlier, the Judaizers and, and, and probably both them and the, and the pagans that were around them, because when they converted them, um, um, they converted. And so, again, they zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous in a good thing always and not when I am present with you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just want to act up when he's they just want to act right when he's there. When he's there. <laughs> and that kind of falls along when you talking about with Barnabas and, and Peter earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, they were certain way, right? They were. And then when the boys were around, they changed. So you know the same way. <laughs> when things like that happen, um, and, and I've learned some that that you just um, and this is just not necessarily for this sometimes to avoid it you just don't go around the person if they haven't matured enough to be like that and sometimes a person you turn around and, and be and, and be mature enough and I use the word maturity because those people are still they're still Christians still saved but there's a maturity we have to grow mm -hmm. and that's part of growth because being popular is, is something that, 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 that can drive a person or drive a group, that they want to be popular. And, and I said this before, and I, I'm, I'm sure Pastor heard me say it before, that, that Jesus, after he fed the 5,000, he wanted to make him king, right? Mm -hmm. But he told, us, he told his disciples, and I'm paraphrasing again, to go on. And he had to be by, you know, so he can be by himself in prayer, right? I believe that that this is Melvin speaking. That that power of being popular was was getting to him because he was he was what human and God. You know, he was man and God, and so he felt some of that um, um, the, the mankind because we know that he, he he was he was tempted 
right? The, the word said he was tempted in 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. In the temptation. But that wasn't sin. And, and that's something that we must know. Because you are tempted, but he didn't sin. Mm -hmm. Because you get the temptation, you know, when you fall through with it, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But the temptation was there. That that power. And he had the power. And he know and um when some Satan told him, I promise you all this, he didn't need to promise him all that. And um, because Jesus had the, 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 the power to do that, but he did not use that. And so the, the, the issue is that that being our own and being popular is 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 a sometimes it can be a and, and it's taking a lot of people down. How many and, and, and you see how many teenage movies you've seen by cheerleaders? They want to be chilies. They got to be the popular one. And always the it's the football player and the chili, right? And the homecoming queen and king and queen. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. But you get to a point that that's not a, a, a bad thing if you're doing the good thing, the right thing, right? It is when you the humility and all that goes away because the heart is there. Because we know many of them that are well, football players, a lot of them have good hearts and do a lot of a lot of things. I'm just using that as an example. Our, our pro players or, or whatever they do, they do great things. And they're popular. But they still do. And, and those do better when they can handle it that way. It's called when the popularity is gone, they can still they can still do good things, be, be zealous in a good thing always and not because other people around them. Mm -hmm. And Paul is, is just saying in verse 18, you still have that, have that zeal. Because when the popularity gone and, and, and you can't pick up the phone or if you are mean to people or you do people wrong and that popularity is gone, then when you start trying to pick up the phone to call those individuals, hmm, oftentimes what they call them today, the, the young people say, hey, why are you ghosting me? You get ghosted. <laughs> won't call you back and mm -hmm. won't pick up the phone. So that's a, so that. Being, not because somebody's looking at you around, you still, you need to be zealous. Let's, what does the New, trans, New, New Living Translation say? Those false teachers, well, I believe it was Judaizers in, in this um, interpretation, are so eager to, eager to win your favor, but their intentions are not good. They are trying to shut you off from me so that you would not pay attention only to them. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right. But let them do it all the time, not just when I'm with you. And this is the thing with children and parents. You want your, your, your children to do things that are good, if you will, when you're not around. And we are like the, we are the children of God that when we don't have anybody around us, we still need to act as though that, that, that God is with Like Paul was saying, I'm, I'm not with you, but that, that in this case, that Paul is still, that Paul's with us, mm -hmm. and we're going to do the right thing. Sometimes that could be, that could be difficult because of the, the popularity. Okay, and, and, and looking at going, um, and we'll go, we'll go a little further, we have time to, uh, today, to verse 19. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed to you. My little children, for whom I labor and birth again until Christ. Hmm. My little children, for whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed to you. What what does what can you can you um, ascertain and get out of that? Because I told you sometimes Paul's writing, you have to really break down what's going on. What what's, what what in nineteen? What do you think? is what he is writing to them. What, what is the point he's trying to get across in our layman's terms? I share with you um, what, what I think. My, he calls them little children. Mm -hmm. First of all, he doesn't call them children, right? My little children. Right. To me, that's immaturity. Immaturity. For whom I labor and birth, whom I labor and birth again, again, 
because he's labored before, because right, he told him before, <laughs> already labored for you mm -hmm. and wasn't in vain. But he is laboring again mm -hmm. until Christ comes. He's going to keep being zealous and keep doing it until Christ comes. It's formed in you until you've accepted it. And the maturity is it's coming to you. 20. I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone for I have doubts about you. Ooh. So that's that rebuke again. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because he, he said, I got the birth again. Here it is. Wasn't in vain the first time. Here it is. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. And to be present because you're not doing that when I'm gone. Yes. agree with you. The thing is, it's the maturity. Right. Exactly. You know, and where it's, it's, it's we, and, and there are people who are in, and you know, in this case right here, who have been, let's say if, if Paul approached them, and they've been doing this for, for 20 years, mm -hmm. but they haven't done anything. I mean, they haven't grown anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and that way I was saying, referring to little children, that you still haven't gone, and, and, and of course, um, you know, um, this first Peter, second Peter, you know, that you're still a newborn. And, and you have not, but you're still on milk, okay? And so here it is that, um, and I'm going to look that up, um, that you, you are newborn, and, and uh, I think it's um, 2 Peter chapter 2, it's either 1, 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, um, that you are a, you're still, you're still a newborn, and, 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 and that's what I think is parallel to what, uh, um, what Paul is saying is, is stated in here, right in here. Let's see. And I don't want to be. And we got, we got first time. Peter two and two. Yeah, is it First Peter two and two? Therefore, uh, yeah, yeah. First Peter two two and two. Um, I start with verse one from the New King James Version. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deeds, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Those are all the things that sent of an immature Christian, right? Mm -hmm. That as newborn babes <laughs> mm -hmm. desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow. You get the milk, I mean, so that you may grow because that they're doing newborn actions here. Mm -hmm. And so thereby, if indeed you have tasted the Lord is gracious, they have tasted the Lord is gracious, but they're still on on that milk. And um, um, and I stated um, before too, and, and I did um, this sort of talking about uh, in, in Hebrews, and I talked about it before, uh, chapter 5, I think in, in um, verse 12, stating that, um, let's see if that's the right one. Well, though, by this time, you ought to be teachers. Now, these are the people who've really been in for a while. And, and when you say ought to be teachers, referring to a length of time, more than anything else. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk <laughs> and not solid food. So you, 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 you get to a point where... You know, after a while, and, and I don't know if he's referring to this, but after a while, we need to grow. And, and, and that's what, you know, and Paul says, they have not grown and have to go back and do it, do it again. So uh, the thing is, 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 is growth. And, and I, I've heard someone say before, and I'm going to comment on this, 
don't get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and sometimes that's that's the that that falls on the leadership and teachers because people come and join. And, um, and and we know you're mature Christian since you just you just storm as you take someone that's off the street that's that has not been exposed mm -hmm. and come in and we expose them. That person joins and gets together. I'm giving my life to Christ. I'm saved, you know, I've, I've done Romans 10:9, I'm, I'm, I'm saved. Then that, that we, we drop them off. We don't teach them, encourage them to come to Sunday school, you know, Bible study. But because that's where the growth comes in. It's great that the pastor gets up and we having, you know, service, but that's a one-way, um, and I forgot the speech, what you call that. When one person just does not speak and there's no response, um, I forgot the word, took a speech class, and I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, when, uh, when one person's just doing the speaking and, and, and there's no, no interaction, there's no response, right? You know, we say amen and stuff, but pastors here doing all the teaching. Sunday school and Bible school is the time you come in and you get a chance to ask those questions. You get a chance to be a little more informal. So, and the you grow on because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But the the, the real um, growth, I think, the underlying growth, I should say, comes from Bible study and Sunday school or one-on-one -on -one teaching or whatever. Because we get to a point that sometimes if a person's been in the word, you know, been 40 years going to church or 60 years, uh, 60 years old, I've been in church for 50 years, my mind is still good, and I don't even know, you know, like, like the, the books, of, you know, at least some of the books of the Bible, you know, um, are, are, are a certain number of books, you know, those things are certain things that we try to grow to, now don't get me wrong to try to put everything to memory, mm -hmm. but to know the resources and, and at least have grown, whatever that group, because we're not going to offer it, in the same, same, um, and, and the progress, the, the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's this? So would that mean that, like when you said these members or brethren, is that you said desire the same to know that we may grow. So in other words, I'm wondering, sometimes we're, we're happy with just hearing the word. Yeah. But your underlying reason for desiring this word this milk is so you may grow. That's right. So if you have no intentions of growing, it is a waste of time to feed you. Yeah, yeah it, <laughs> it, it, it is, but I, I, I see if you're going to, that's what Paul was saying, he did it in vain, right? Uh -huh. But he still said, I'm going to, I'm going to prepare. I'm, that's right, I'm still going to do, I'm still going to be zealous and, and present it to you again. Mm -hmm. Meaning he had not given up on them. Okay. And I think that what you just said is, is the human thing, and that's probably more the way Melvin would handle it too. But we, but it's, I'm working on that mm -hmm. to get beyond that because if you you're wasting the time, then watch as I come back to you again. But we realize too that sometimes people need an aha moment to wake up. And and what I mean by that sometimes, because one may plant, what well, one may water, but God actually is doing the increase. So if the person doesn't receive it from me. I should not, although Paul can, because we remember this is the early church, to jump up and down and say, okay, you didn't get it from me. But then if you don't get it from me, pastor may come by, you may come by, sister Lynette may come by, and that person may say, okay, boom, and there may be a situation, or the person, I may be a stumbling block for that person. So I guess in actually I was saying that if the people have no knowledge that they grow from the word, because in most places that maybe you may have been and I, but it's like the word we love. The Bible says they approach me like they love me. Mm -hmm. But see, it's it has to be an intention. Mm -hmm. So if I come, what is your intention? Like he asked. I, I think it was John the Baptist asked, you come here to repent, mm -hmm. but you haven't gotten any works of repentance. Mm -hmm. So he said, you're not going to escape the wrath to come. Mm -hmm. There's different reasons why people do different things. Right. So when we come to Bible study or whatever, then the intention needs to be, this is so you can grow, right. which will make people say, oh, that's why I come. Because if there's an ignorance of why I'm doing what I'm doing, even though I'm here, 
I don't know that you're intended. You know, that's a, that's a very good point because if you're brand new, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, that's, that's a very good point. I, I'm not, I've taken that. And so that's something that I just picked up just right now yeah. by, by being here tonight because I am here at Bible study, exactly. right? <laughs> and so that, that, that's a very good point because we, we do, if we, if even we've been around it for a while, we just take it for granted that we come into Sunday school or Bible study to get more, but that person who just a new, a new uh, uh, um, that's been born again that comes in, we just assume they know that, but that may not necessarily be the case. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's and that's that's a very good point because they they you know when you come in you are big because you think about it when 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 um, Jesus told Nicodemus you know when you have to be. You have to be born again, mm -hmm. and he couldn't get it. But when we look at that born again, and, and 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 we think about it more, when you're born again, you come out. You don't come out of your mother's womb <laughs> running a sprint or a marathon. You know, you coming out. You may Google guy guy whatever. You can't walk or do anything. Mm -hmm. But then you start out. You got to do a little crawling, right? You get up. You may get up eventually. You can get your arms around. You know. Um, uh, my little nephew, you now you see, they show a picture. He's in a little walker going around. Now he's picking up. Now he's he's got his walking around the table. You know, next thing you know, he's going to be walking. Exactly. But it's it's a it's you know we progress through this, mm -hmm. and some and that's some careful. Try to be careful not to throw out a lot of high dollar words, because mm -hmm. you can get up in front of folks and pass. You know, you can get a lot of, you know, I can sit up here and try to show you that I am eloquent in the word. Who is that for? <laughs> it's that's for me when when you do that, because you you're supposed to be able to get it down to the to the to the level like we're doing right here, word for word, so everyone would understand. Mm -hmm. And with that, and we we'll stop at verse twenty in, in this part tonight. But to to sum up what and, and that's what Paul's saying. What we have learned learned tonight that we are an heir. We got the inheritance. Because Jesus went to the cross, right? That we are adopted. Although we were Gentiles, we're not Jews, but even for Christians, that because Jesus went to the cross, right? We're not like a slave or the child who hasn't received it. We are full grown, right? So we have received all the inheritance, all the rights, and everything with it. Now, when Pastor goes on, you know, going to the, to the, the next few chapters, you know, he. He's, he's developed them to tell them they need to change that, but don't get crazy too because they got these liberties and they think they can just go do what you want to do. No, you know, that's what goes back to the tutor. He's developing that in this letter. And, and he is strong in that. We all know that. That he's developing that, that you got this one way, but you can't go, you can't um, get crazy. Because we used to say, don't get buck wild, right? Don't get out there and just do anything. You got to be, you know, we, and plus people are looking at you. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be a mature Christian. This person this, you described just came in, and, I'm, and they see me out later on somewhere. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting. Now, I'm not passing judgment on them but when I say this. Mm -hmm. But we realize that if they see you can do that, you go up and you go into the red dot <laughs> every Friday night, you see you pull up at the red dot, then, then that's okay. And, but that may be a stumbling block for a person. That person may be coming away from that. But they see you doing that, then what does that mean? So um, um, are we our brother's keeper? You know, um, but that's what response, and, and we talked about in Sunday school, I think it's one of the other lessons, one of the other quarters, about the responsibilities that come along with that. That we, we have it, and we live our lives, and it's, it's not a responsibility to put shackles on our feet, but we have a responsibility. In, in a way for those that come in to try to help them bring them to Christ because Christians have hurt the movement I believe mm -hmm. Christians themselves and um, you get to the point I got it I think I have it or whatever I don't, I don't need to share I rather, I'm going to just sit up and, I'm stand in front of the church mm -hmm. everybody look at it and, and, and give reverence <laughs> okay now I can walk around okay and everybody's looking, I'm popular too. Mm -hmm. And I got it going on, but I'm not doing the service. Mm -hmm. The Gospel of Mark, it, Gospel is it was 16 chapters, right? It's somewhere around here. 16 chapters. But you see Jesus 
He is working. God performing miracles. He's out. He's a he's a suffering sub. He's a a servant leader, and that's what we all should be strive for to be that servant leader. And service is 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 that that's what it's about. And um, and in closing, we look at um, um, that those up front in, in James three and one states that um, teachers are held to a stricter judgment. And we, we, we talk about that another time. But teachers are helps us. Okay, all minds are clear. Everybody got any other questions? Anything? Um, and we'll pick up at, at um, the other side for. We we'll start back in 19 again and pick up. Um, any questions? Anything? Thank you for your comments. Everything and uh, and next week and and, and um, we do do this one more time before a pastor comes up. And um, and so um, um, we pray for his healing. With, with his mouth, and so we just thank you for that. Any, any, everybody, everybody, good? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you and give you all honor and praise, Heavenly Father, for this lesson tonight, dear God. Knowing that we are all here because, Lord, we we are pursuing that solid food because the milk, Heavenly Father, and 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 if we if we don't get a little bit of you know, look, look, the grits missed in it or whatever so we can grow and so we can get to that solid food, dear God, because they help us discern between good and evil, Heavenly mm -hmm. Father. So we just thank you for this word that Paul had, had written for us, Heavenly Father, everyone in the room here, Heavenly Father, that we continue to grow, that we would, so that no one would have to come and be saying that they have to go back to you, Heavenly Father, in Christ come and teach again because everything that's being said that's true for the sticks, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. and it resonates in everyone, that it's understandable, dear God, and you're taking and move forward and, and, and go out and, and bring others into the fold. Let them come and be grafted in, Heavenly Father. We want everyone to be in there and to receive the inheritance, Heavenly Father. So we just thank you, dear God, as we move forward. We thank you for, dear God, we pray for our sick and children, for our past, Heavenly Father, that his mouth heals very quickly, Heavenly Father, so he can get up and and continue to proclaim the word, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. But all the others that may be sick, and, and um, from Jeremiah's sister Cheryl, um, and my, my wife Lynette, Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we pray for the um, Howard family in, in this time of bereavement, dear God, as they continue to move on and gain strength, Heavenly Father, to move on from, from, from the death of, of um, um, Mr. Howard. So we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for being who you are. We give you all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm.